So now that we're set up with our, our kind of default initialized setup, uh, I like to start with the amplifier uh, when working, when, when, when teaching basic synthesis, and mainly because amplitude is just like the, the most important thing, right? Everything is just kind of built up on, ampli on, on amplitude. And we can kind of work through oscillator, filter, then amp, but I do like um, doing the amplifier first and getting right into modulation, really talking about the amp envelope right away. And one of the reasons is, I always find when teaching that if you get that like most important thing right away or the thing that they usually stumble on, right away, maybe it's the most attention right at the beginning. And I find that the sustain level is often what students really get confused about. You know, we, we tend to think of the envelope as all time, right? We have four stages, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And we see those here uh, listed on our diagram right there. And, you know, sustain is different than the rest. But there's this linguistic issue in that, you know, when I'm talking about like a guitar and playing guitar, sustain is an amount of time. It's how long that note lasts. But in synth land, it's a level and it is different from the other, other ones. So I think if I can get to sustain right away and get that one lesson just taught immediately, it, things tend to be pretty smooth um, from then on. And this is actually where I find that the, the, the Gaia software can really help. We have this great wave viewer that can be in two modes. We can have it set up like this, where I play a note and I see just the waveform, right? I'm seeing the sawtooth waveform and it's really kind of a zoomed in view of time. But I can also switch over to the envelope view. And I find this is really, really helpful in getting the um, students to really think about what the envelope is. So now we're really just zooming out in time. It's a more like a, a real-time waveform display, sort of like in a DAW when, when you record into an audio track. But if I hit a note now, we see kind of a wider view and we can see that now I have kind of an organ envelope. And I tend to break down um, the idea of, of the envelope in, in, a, in a bunch of categories. You know, this is, I call the switch, which is just sustain all the way up and attack, decay, and release all the way down. So we just basically turn on the sound and turn it off when we release. And before I even kind of look at attack, decay, and release, I like to have the students kind of play with sustain to really get that feeling for what's happening with it. So if I play a note and move sustain, we see that I'm really controlling the level with that, right? So immediately we're moving a fader and we're feeling that we're controlling the level of the sound, not the amount of time, even though linguistically we would think sustain is an amount of time. But I think that kind of points it out pretty clearly. We also can start realizing the gain staging within the synthesizer. We have sustain level here, we also have level here, and we have an output level right there, right? They all control the level, and we're going to have to try to figure out, you know, which is the important one at any one moment. I tend to leave the amplitude level all the way up, the output gain all the way up, and then play with sustain. I also find that just kind of performing it kind of really makes it, I don't know, get into the student's head. You know, I'm, I'm feeling this thing change. We have this nice um, physical uh, experience of it instead of just kind of turning knobs on a screen. So... That's, that's sustain, and now we'll start looking at attack, decay, and release. And one of my favorite kind of ways to get into working with these is to kind of have the students really think about acoustic instruments. And though it's just a sawtooth waveform, it's not a great representation of, say, a violin or a cello, we can kind of use that thinking to really think about what the envelope is trying to emulate. And so when we have sustain up, because of the level, what we're really saying is that we're adding energy to the system as we're holding the note. So we can kind of, you know, divide all instruments up in, into two categories. We can have sustaining and non-sustaining sounds, or sustaining and percussive sounds, right? And when, when, I, when I say a sustaining sound, I'm really saying that we're adding energy to the sound as it's playing. So we can think of that as a bow, or blowing into an into a instrument, or maybe adding energy electromechanically, like an organ, which I'm describing here. But... So let's just think about a violin here, right? Well, if I'm playing violin, it doesn't just turn on and off, right? There's different attack characteristics. Um, I can slowly bow that note to get it kind of to swell in, or it can come in immediately. And that's where this attack parameter comes in. That's this A stage in the envelope. Now, this is another uh, you know, term that's kind of confusing. A lot of students think, oh, attack. Well, if I turn that up, I'll get a stronger attack. And actually, it's kind of opposite. So having again, having the student kind of play with attack can be really useful. And then I start thinking, okay, maybe if I try to imitate like a violin performance, um, performing this attack can be really cool. If I bring that up, we'll see the sound's going to swell in. And if I let go, it's going to stop immediately because my release time is at zero. But now I can think... Right, we can kind of toy with that attack 
uh, characteristic. And because this is such, you know, a, kind of a, a haptic instrument, right? I can feel it at the time. I find that I actually more likely to really perform the envelope uh, with this device than I am with software. Rarely do I really kind of manipulate attack time in software, but when I have a synth like this, I really do. And I think I get a great feeling for it uh, when doing this. So just setting up an exercise for the student to kind of really play attack and create a uh, kind of a smooth align with that is wonderful. So at the same time, I, I might bring that up again to have a little bit of a, a swelling in character. And I also might think, well, you know what? When you, re when you stop bowing on a violin, the note lasts a little bit. It decays kind of naturally. And that's what our release phase is for. And you'll even see on the, uh, the diagram on the, on the synth here, I have a key on that's, that's labeled and also key off that's labeled. So that's saying when I stop the note, this portion of the envelope starts. And I find in almost all sounds, a little bit of release time is nice. Makes it sound natural and um, we can kind of toy it that it gives a little bit of a reverb characteristic to it. We also might want to play with the idea of curvature. And very often, you know, we think of everything as being straight lines. And even, even things on this diagram are kind of drawn with straight lines, but kind of looking at the wave viewer really shows us that the stages of this envelope aren't exactly linear or aren't exactly straight. And then even kind of manipulating the tack time, you can manipulate that curvature. And starting to think on that level is kind of nice because often we just get this diagram in our brain and we kind of think of things as straight lines, but really everything's curved. So the wave viewer really helps kind of get that idea uh, in the brain. Now, you know, in this, the next thing I like to talk about with envelopes is this idea of sustaining versus non-sustaining. And really, you know, so it, it comes up with a great discussion often. I'm like, you know, which, what instruments are sustaining instruments? And often string sounds come up, you know, like a bowed instrument. I might say, well, what if you play pizzicato? Is it sustaining then? And then you realize, no, it's not. Because when you play a pizzicato, you just pluck the string, um, the energy is allowed to die away naturally. So that's a non-sustaining articulation. So we kind of refine the definition of what sustaining and non-sustaining is. It's not so much that the instrument is sustaining or non-sustaining, it's often the articulation, right? And so if I'm to create more of a pizzicato sound, I would have to remove sustain all the way to nothing. And uh, let's hear what you get here. And I'll also bring a tack all the way down. And we just get a little bit of a pluck, right? And as I increase my decay time, I can, inc I, I can change the decay of that pluck. I can change the characteristic of it. So that's the next thing I'll say. And then you know what? So this represents all sorts of percussive instruments, drums, cymbals, guitar, even piano. And piano is often a cool one to bring up because people think of it as sustaining because it lasts so long. But really, that's just a long decay time, right? It just takes a long time to decay. Now, we also can refine this idea of what uh, a percussive instrument is, right? There's actually, we can, we can kind of define it in two categories. Some percussive instruments, you just let ring. Like a pizzicato violin, it's always just going to let ring, right? But some other ones stop, like an example of a piano. I play a piano note, and I let go and it kind of stops. And what we really have here, if release is down, is a damped percussive envelope. It's like those dampers on the piano coming up and stopping the note. And we can get that characteristic, right? Now, that's, that's like a piano note, but if I think of something like a cymbal, rarely do I choke that cymbal, right? Which is what was represented here. So I would consider this more of a damped percussive envelope. And then if I want to think of just a typical percussive envelope or a one-shot envelope, I would try to make the release the same as decay. And if they're the same, it almost doesn't matter if you hold the note or if you play one quick. It's going to decay, it's going to decay the same way, right? So we get our kind of one-shot envelope there. And by moving those the same, we're going to keep that characteristic at various levels. So that's a really important uh, distinction to make, I think. And, you know, one of the great things about learning synthesis is we start learning more about acoustic instruments, right? We'll start hearing instruments differently. We develop a, a language for, uh, for, for timbre, which we often don't have. We just think it's a violin. But if I start doing these things, I kind of think about performance characteristics more, and I think about the sound I hear more. Now, when teaching the envelope, you know, those, those are great categories to be in, right? And then we have two more envelopes that I think are really interesting to check out. The next one is kind of a bowing or blowing envelope. And what we really find when we have a kind of uh, a, bow, a bowed instrument or a blowed instrument, uh, blown instrument, is that we have all this energy right at the beginning, and then it kind, of and it kind of steadies down to a sustaining state. And we kind of represent that by putting sustain kind of in the middle attack very low, we kind of adjust decay to uh, taste, and then we'll see 
a strong attack and a sustaining level. We might get something like this, which is represents really what you see in the, on the uh, diagram here, and it's kind of a, bow, a bowed or a blown envelope. And then the last one I always pose is kind of a puzzle to my students. Is there a way to configure an envelope so if you play short, you get a long tone, and if you hold the key down, you get a short one. And it's a great puzzle because it, you know, it's kind of a brain teaser for the class. And I usually like end the first synth lesson with that. So they go home and they start thinking about this, like how can I set this envelope? So if I hold the key down, I get a short hit, but if I just tap it, I get a long one. And it's, it's kind of a brain teaser, I think it's, I think it's fun. And you know, I first came across this by accident because I kind of messed up my envelope and was totally confused, but it's kind of a neat idea. And we get this by turning sustain all the way down, release quite high, and decay very low. Check this out, if I play a key quick, if I play a key and hold it, we get that percussive sound, right? But if I just tap it, the sound goes on for a long time. So this is kind of a weird one, and what's happening, and I think what this points out really clearly, is that the release phase starts at the level of the note off, right? So the idea is if, if, I, if I turn decay up, we can kind of really hear it. As this thing is decaying, if I let go, it starts wherever I let my note off, right? That release phase starts at that point. So it's kind of a nice brain teaser. It's also kind of a fun thing to play with. And it does bring up, you know, different kind of playing capabilities because we can do things like this. I can play low notes and just tap them and get held notes playing out. And I can kind of perform above it. Not that I need to do that all the time, but it's a fun little brain teaser to kind of end a lesson on envelopes with.